Good afternoon. I'm Jesse Kurtz in the Mountain West Network Studio, where we continue with the Mountain West Digital Tip-Off this afternoon with a stop at the campus of San Diego State University to hear from Stacy Terry and the Aztec women, and also Steve Fisher and the Aztec men. Welcome back. We're now joined by 16th year head coach Steve Fisher, senior forward J.J. O'Brien, junior forward Winston Shepard. Uh, coach Fisher will be joining us in just a few moments, so we'll go ahead and open with questions for the student athletes from those here in attendance. Uh, anyone on the phone would like to ask a question, they can do so by uh, dialing 1-4 to be uh, brought into the queue. If they wish to withdraw that question, just press 1-3. Again, questions for the student athletes from those in attendance. All right, you've had a good chance a few weeks now to see the freshmen and you know practice action day in day out. Um, is there anything that you've seen in them that you <coughs> didn't really think you'd see from them coming into this year? Like you knew about them in high school, you knew about what they could do, but, but have they surprised you in any way? Um, I think just you know their knowledge of the game, the court savvy, their ability to play and read and make decisions in you know the course of battle. So you know just their their basketball IQs have a pressure have impressed me a lot. Um, not many freshmen that are coming in have that come in and make decisions and make plays like that. So that's what's stood out to them you know, in my eyes. Same thing yours? Uh, yeah, same thing. I'm still waiting to get on the court with Malik and Zylan. I can't wait. Um, but Trey Kellen and Zabo, have, Kellen and Zabo have been out there, and I think those guys will be a big part of the team this year. Any advice you guys give to, to um, Cheatham, um, especially you, because yet yeah, it's different, but you had a, you know, that wretched here sitting out just watching practice, not watching practice, but watching games, then it's going to be the same deal for at least, you know, a few months. Um, any advice you could give them? Uh, the advice I I would give him and, and try to give him now is just to, to be ready when, when he comes to play. Uh, you know, he's not going to have all the teaching time, on-court teaching time that all of us have had right away so when he does come back to play play um, he needs to be ready with by by really paying attention when he's sitting out now. So when you know when he's sitting out on the sidelines in practice or in, in the games if he misses if he misses games if he, he really needs to be focused in and out on, on our concepts and what, what we do. Um, obviously obviously this program with a lot of getting a lot of national attention now um, and you you get these new players who come into the program who have to adjust to having the spotlight, spotlight on them. Do you guys give these young guys any advice about adjusting to the spotlight at all? Well, they're good guys. You know, they don't – they're not bad people, you know, so we, we don't have to coach them up or, you know, we give the same advice that we would give to everybody. Um, they're good guys, you know, they don't run the streets and things like that, so – they just kind of fell in and follow our lead, really. From you guys' perspective, is that freshman class as good as advertised? I would say so. I think it's better than what people know because uh, Trey Kill and Zabo are much better than people probably think. Do you agree, JJ? Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, uh, Zabo and, and Trey have, have been amazing so far, and they're going to be big parts of the team. So I know they had high rankings coming in, but their, their ability to play is, is something else. And they've, they've proven themselves this far. For, for both, <clears throat> both players, you've had a couple weeks of practice now. Are you where you think you should be, and, and where is the team right now? And, and, and have you been pleased with how it's gone, or are you there's still things need to be worked on? we got a long way to go to reach the goals that we want to. Um, we make progress every day. But uh, I think we, I, me personally, I think we have a long way to go. Yeah, I agree as well. Um, you know, like he said, we make progress every day, and, and right now we're, we're, I think we're at a good point. Um, but we still got to get better. There's still a lot of things we need to work on. There's still things we need to cover. So, so um, we still have a long time left to to get ready, and, and we're going to take full advantage of that time. JJ, you said a couple weeks ago that. One of the, your big question in practice was, what would his team's identity be? Mm -hmm. Is that starting to emerge? Uh, a little bit so far. Um, it'll show more when we, you know, are in our games and playing. Um, but, you know, we're hardworking and, and we play defense and, and 
our offense is, is really good this year. Um, we, I think we kind of have a balanced attack both outside and inside. So, so um, But our identity will, will continue to emerge and show itself as, as time goes on. Goes on. Since you guys are the ones who actually have to play the games, what do you think of the fans' lofty expectations for you guys? Love them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, that's what comes when you have a program that has continued to win, uh, continue to produce great players. Um, every year those expectations go up. Uh, we don't run from them. And that's why I said we have a long way to go. And we just want to continue to work hard um, and t- to get out there and show and prove. How about you, JJ? Yeah, um, it definitely keeps us on our toes, you know. Um, there's not going to be any flight under the radar this year. Um, people have high expectations out of us. So it, um, it puts a good a good pressure on us to uh, to get better every day to, to really achieve our goals this year. Steve, do you have a health update on the two freshman big men? Do I? Yeah. Any? Not really, other than the, other than the fact that the timetable uh, is uh, it's floating. Uh, Zylan is more long term. He had surgery, I think, September the third, and we were told by Doctor Bear three to four months. So uh, he's out of the cast in a boot, still in a boot. Uh, they're trying to get the ankle and, and foot. Uh, where it's got the flexibility to just to, to walk on it after that. So I think he's further down the road than Malik, who is being gently nudged along, hadn't played in 18, 18 months, broke, twice broken his leg, and uh, has not really gone into anything full-blown competitively. Done 5-0 stuff, done a little bit of, little bit of controlled half-court stuff, uh, but very little spot shoot, that sort of thing. So I don't know how what his status will be. That, that's kind of still up in the air. Are there any additional questions for student-athletes? Um, JJ, you kind of had that lingering kind of injury last year. Um, has it been, have you been, uh, I guess, more comfortable this year, just at least during practices? Does it feel more, um, like it doesn't bug you as much, I guess? Yeah, that's, that isn't a problem, a problem anymore. That ended last year. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's done with Anything else for the student athletes? Uh, one more thing. Uh, shooting, um, Coach Fisher said during the um, first press conference that um, he doesn't want this program to be known as a team that doesn't sh- um, shoot very well. Um, have you guys been putting an emphasis, putting an emphasis on it during practices and whatnot? Well, uh, everybody's worked on their game tremendously. Um, people are taking steps forward. Um, so I guess, we, I guess we just have to wait until the ball gets tipped up to see. Thank you, Winston. Thank you, JJ. You guys are good. Go ahead. Tell Dutch to go ahead and move forward. Whatever you're doing, go ahead and move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Coach, you heard us talking with the players sort of in the, in the beginning about how the freshmen are assimilating to, you know, to the college style, to the college life, to just and playing with the team on the court. Um, what have you seen from the coach's perspective uh, than from the player's perspective, what those uh, new guys are bringing? We knew we recruited a good class. We have four freshmen. First time we've recruited, excluded exclusively freshmen, high school kids. And they're good. Uh, the nicest thing about them is they're teach- teachable. They want to get better. They know they don't have all the answers. And we've only got two of them out there now. So to be honest, it's hard to tell with the other two what's going to happen. But they're good people. Malik and Zylan are both good young guys and talented players. So we need to get them back where they can get out and get in the mix a little bit more. Trey Kell has a very unique feel for how to play. And that's hard to teach. He instinctively makes plays and moves that you don't teach. Whether you're an incoming freshman or whether you're a graduating senior, he's got a little knack of how to play. And Zabo is a point guard that uh, 
that plays a position that we need, and he plays so hard and wants to please so badly. So they're wonderful young guys, and all of them. Uh, I got a I got an email the other day that on Saturday our four freshmen in Winston were in a restaurant, and an elderly woman was in having a birthday, and talk, she raved about them. They came over and they wanted a picture with them and they were so good and I think that that kind of tells you a little bit about the quality of people, people and they you know you got to have a bit of an ego to do anything uh, and they've got that but they don't, they don't have an ego to the point where they think the world owes them a living or they're they're not appreciative when people recognize them uh, they don't take it as a burden and they, they've been really good and how they've handled themselves around campus, the community, and on the basketball team. Do you have a projected starting five? Do I have a projected starting five? In my mind, I, I, if we played today, I, I know who I'd start, and I'd just as soon keep that to myself. Uh, and yet I do know that, that, like J.J. said, I think that's going to be ever-changing. And We're going to play a lot of guys early. Even against good, the good competition we're playing, and we'll find out who can do what and under what, in circ and under what circumstance. Uh, but it, 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 it'll be interesting for us, too. I think a year ago, and we talked on this, Bernie, before, we were pretty set with Josh parachuting in and the other spots were pretty much set as to who they would be and I knew what we would get because we'd seen them all play and this year's a little bit uncertain you know Angelo's going to play didn't play last year never played for us the freshmen are going to play they've never played in college so it'll be interesting to see what happens is that, is that really a change in philosophy for you? I mean, you, you've been a guy that you like to get a starting lineup and, and keep continuity, unless there's an injury, obviously. Um, but to, to have that much um, flexibility and, and that much in fluidity, uh, is that new for you? Yes and no. Uh, we've had here, I've had other places, talented group with depth, uh, usually it has a way of working itself out. I won't be hesitant if I feel, you know, the guy, the subbing for the guy to take that guy's spot if we feel that's best for us. And he's played that to earn that opportunity. I also, as you can tell by how we've done things here, I've been a creature of habit where we get a lineup and unless injury takes its place, I'm not quick to throw somebody under the bus or out of the lineup if he has one bad game. Uh, play hard and you know, we'll make decisions but I would say that there there is a chance this year that our lineup will vary as our season goes on. We will probably not have the same starting lineup for 35 games. So will X be replaced by one guy or a handful of guys? Probably, probably multiple people. Uh, he won't be replaced. What he did for this program is mind-boggling. 